God is saying today, your body is my temple, and I am a trusted renter. Does it not occur to you that I will make your health and vitality stronger and more refreshed? Inside of you is where I make my home. I am not dwelling on the inside of you without regard to the state of your health, says the Father. I am not doing this. My entire existence is revolving around you. Because I am on the inside of you, I am renewing, blessing, and rejuvenating you. Your strength will not diminish, and your eyes will not go dim, just as Moses did in the past. On my mind and in my eyes are all of the concerns that you have regarding your health. Your health is rapidly improving thanks to your efforts. And I am supplying the grace to cooperate with those things that make for excellent choices in every area of your activities and your appetites, says the Father. I am causing you to be more robust and more fit, and I am providing you with the grace to cooperate with those things. Being legalistic and have a difficult relationship with oneself offers very little advantage. Trusting me and looking to me to alter what you are unable to change is the time that has come. Yes, I am assisting you. I am the helper, and very soon, even within the next few days, you will start to witness that happening in a significantly different way. Therefore, help me to move my spirit by cooperating with it. I want you to say, yes, to my, yes, and, no, to the things that do not contribute to your well-being, blessings, and benefits. Even more than that, I am going to focus on altering your metabolism as well as your disposition. Your level of activity is going to increase. Picture yourself in this light. In the same way that I told Joshua about Jericho, see, I have given you the city, I will say to you, see, I have given you your own body. This is because it is more advantageous for a person to manage his own body than it is for someone to take a city. I will reward you with the results that you will witness if you rise up and take control of your domain. As soon as you realize that this is not about human striving but rather about the new thing I am producing in you, you will have an overwhelming sense of joy. This is because you will be the recipient of the benefits that I am bringing about in you. It's not that you have a problem, rather, it's that you have something right. My spirit is echoing down on the inside of you bringing fresh life, power, and recuperation to every area of your being. This is what my spirit is doing. During this day, God instructs you to wake up and go out and make yourself available. I am putting people in your path who are in need of a word of encouragement and a word of truth, so make yourself available in the public square so that you can be used by me today. The Father says that you are a source of encouragement. Doom and gloom and pessimism, which are so prevalent in conversations in today's world, are not anything that you are about. Today, I want you to know that you are able to hear my voice. Because I am putting my voice within you, you are able to hear my voice already. You have a desire, an appreciation, and a heavenly regard for the prophetic voice, and the spirit of prophecy is flowing through you to inspire you to offer light to people who are in darkness and encouragement to others who are on the verge of giving up on life. During the course of your day today, make it your unwavering goal to offer words of encouragement to people who are feeling discouraged and disillusioned with life. Make a request to me, Holy Spirit, what is it that I can say to encourage this one? As soon as you make the request, I will demonstrate it to you there is going to be a lot more fuel added to the fire. You will receive confirmation in the near future. It is going to be clear to you that you are aware of the fact that those individuals have been moved by the gift that I have given you for them. In addition to being a source of joy and delight, it will also serve to motivate and urge you to go with that process. I have worked with you in training, and I will continue to work with you in training. This will not be a pastime that you will just engage in for a short period of time, rather, it will be something that you will continue to engage in for the rest of your life. It is a part of your ministry allotment, and as you work toward walking in this new assignment, extraordinary blessings will flow into your life that you have been looking for for a considerable amount of time. 
The treasuries of heaven are opening out to you, according to what God has revealed to you today. As you open your heart and align your life with my truth and my direction, you will receive my favor and my bounty as your portion. There is no way that guy can give you something like this. There comes a moment, darling, where I want you to come to me and receive from me directly. I have anointed men to teach and reveal, but there is a point that I want you to come to me. When you place your focus on me rather than on another person, I will fulfill the greatest purpose I have for your life. If you seek me personally, there will be the importation of new life not only to you, but to everyone around you who has been asking questions that you have found difficult to answer. This will be the case not only for you, but for everyone else as well. I am going to surprise you with what comes out of your mouth when you are replying people with the toughest hearts, so don't give it any consideration when you are challenged by someone who is skeptical or who does not believe in what you are saying. Because I am the God of surprises, I have some wonderful things in store for you in the near future. As I break free from limitations in the realm of natural things and even in the realm of relationships, I am breaking free. There is a friendship that has been severed entirely, and I am working to bring it back to life. Watch out for this, and anticipate that it will start very soon. You don't need to take any action in order to make it happen, I will take care of it for you. The Father has informed you that it is on its way, and it is pounding at your door. It is all about the happiness and the tranquility that comes from being a part of my kingdom. It would be unacceptable to me for you to go through life devoid of happiness. No longer will I permit you to go through life without experiencing the same level of happiness that my son gave his life to bring into your existence. In light of this, you should anticipate the unexpected and unexpected to start happening. I will flow through you to others as my wisdom suddenly comes to your mouth, and it will appear even in your personal life. I will flow through you. If you pursue the kingdom, you will be able to obtain all you desire, and today is the day that I am executing a quick task, and you will be able to see it, enjoy it, and be happy about it. A new mirror is something that God wants to give you today, he explains. I want you to start seeing yourself in the same way that I see you. There is a distortion in the reflection of how you view yourself that has occurred as a result of your looking in the mirror. There is a difference between the reflection that you see and the reflection that I see. I want to present you with a viewpoint that will materialize right in front of your eyes and enable you to perceive yourself in the same way that I consider you to be. It has been brought to your attention that you have a superficial comprehension of spiritual matters and that you are unable to comprehend the profound truths that my message contains. While you are looking in my word and listening to other people teach my word, you find yourself wondering, where do they get this understanding? The Father explains that those depths are also present within you. As a result of the fact that you are far more spiritually advanced than you give yourself credit for, I am elucidating my word to you and opening your eyes to a larger degree. In your immediate vicinity, there are individuals who do not possess the need or desire for profound matters, and I am working to change that. It is not possible for them to perceive the depths of my spirit inside themselves, and it is also not possible for them to perceive the depths of my spirit within you. They only see one thing when they look at you, but they do not see what I see in you or what I am revealing to you at this very moment. God states that I have exposed everything of my innermost thoughts and feelings to you. I am trying to get a sense of your depths. Over the next few months, I will be measuring your depths because I want you to be aware of what I have buried deep within you. I want you to know what I have set down. Depths to such an extent that it is impossible for any natural light to penetrate. Due to the fact that these things are known on a spiritual level, the normal mind is unable to conceive of them. At this moment, the time has come for you to open your heart and enter the hidden area. This is the season that you have been waiting for. I am going to commune with you and show you things that you are not aware of, and you are going to be transformed as a result. According to the Father, this is the answer to the yearnings of your heart, 
and this is the portion that I have prepared for you. God says today, I am going to bring about a fresh change in your life today. In spite of the fact that my plans have been in place since the beginning of the earth, I have been collecting some blessings that are waiting to be revealed right now, even this week. Your heart should be open, and you should look forward with anticipation to what I am accomplishing today in your situation. It could appear to be unchanging, as if nothing will ever undergo any kind of transformation, but in reality, this is not the case. There is a temporal and mutable quality to the things that are observed. You should say that to yourself. Subject to change should be written across the threshold of your inner man, and you should see it written in your heart. Because I am a God who does not change, it is necessary for you to always be prepared for shifts in the future. The things that man does, intends, or agrees to do do not contribute to your security and stability in any way. Me is the source of your safety. Be at peace, the Father says, and so be it. Enter the location where you can find rest. You should have faith and be aware that the tasks and assignments that I have placed in front of you are not in vain. In your life, you should not let the pressing needs of the outside world take precedence over the priorities and endeavors that come from heaven. You and I are working together. Through you, I am working. It is through you that I am working. You are not a bystander observing the process, therefore, you should never presume that you will be able to sit idly by without any pressure being made on your faith. Take some chances in life. Not what you think or what you feel you believe, but what you actually do is what I value more. You are not going to think yourself into breakthrough, rather, you are going to walk yourself into breakthrough as you trust in me and step out of this day and every day with a radical expectation that I will change the things that need to be changed and rewrite your destiny according to my expectations for you rather than whatever man's expectations are for you. According to the Father, there is no deficiency in heaven at this time. In heaven, there is no deficiency, and I am not deficient either. Because I am within you, there is a supply within you that can satisfy every need and every deficiency. You might find yourself expressing sympathy in the economics of man, but the economy of heaven is the one that will determine how much money you have and how well you are able to meet all of your requirements. I will fulfill your requirements in accordance with the grandeur of my riches. This repository is not located at a remote location. The glory that you pray into and bank into is the glory that is already present inside you at this very now at this very moment. The source of your optimism and the miracle that you find lies within you. That is the location of both my throne and my kingdom where I am located. I am sat on the throne of your heart, and there is no need for you to look any further than that. One of the sacrifices that I made in order to be seated and enthroned in your heart was the death that I endured on the cross. As a result, I take action, I move, and I respond to every cry that your heart makes. I am in you, says the Father, therefore there is no need to look any further. Your very being contains the entirety of my kingdom as well as the answer to each and every request. My spirit dwells in the womb of your human spirit, where it broods, hovers, and conceives, and it is there that every prayer that you may possibly ask in your lifetime is stored in embryonic form. Nothing is impossible to achieve. There is no unattainable goal. Everything is yours because everything is mine and I have taken what is mine and given it to you. Everything is yours because everything is mine. Absolutely, that is the commitment that I make. Come to me, all of you who are laboring and carrying heavy loads, and I will lighten your load and grant your request. There are no conditions attached, and there are no fine print that excludes certain things. Come with confidence. Arrive with eager anticipation. Obtain the most yield. If you pay attention to what my spirit is trying to tell you and then behave in accordance with it, you will never feel ashamed. According to what God has revealed to us today, 
singing songs in the night will bring delight. You must not give the adversary of your soul the opportunity to take the melody that is in your heart. It is not a funeral dirge that the music of the spirit comes from. A god of mourning is not someone I am. As a god, I am one who brings joy. Joy is not a function of my kingdom, rather, it is an integral part of my kingdom. Righteousness, peace, and joy are the building blocks of my kingdom in your life. No one can take away your happiness. Your happiness is not anything transitory or ephemeral in nature. There is no way to take away your delight, but you have the ability to choose to walk away from it by paying attention to and reacting to the events that are occurring around you. Try not to allow that to take place. According to the Father, there is nothing that can separate you from my delight. My happiness is yours to take. When you are facing a difficult situation, my joy is your ally and a resource. Have faith in me, and anticipate that good things will occur. You are not being naive if you believe that the kingdom is in the process of coming and that the sky is not collapsing. The nations of the world argue with one another, rattling their sabers, and doing everything in their power to get you to think and look like them and behave in the same manner as they do. When faced with the persistence of man or the shrillness of their alarmist opinions, do not give in to either of these. In spite of the fact that the entire planet explodes in a catastrophic moment of orgiastic violence, it will not get close to you. There is a hidden location where I have you. You will not suffer any harm because there is no such thing as a man who will attempt to take away from you the blessings that I have established and established in your life. What Jesus is saying today is, give in to my peace. Permit my peace to serve as the umpire in your life, making complete and final decisions regarding all that is important to you. The disposition of your external surroundings is not where you will find serenity from within. The absence of discord is not synonymous with peace. In spite of the fact that battle may be raging around you, you should just move to a place of rest and wrap yourself in my embrace. Your safety is in my hands, and I have you in my grasp. Man's strident insistence that you do things their way will eventually pass, just like the storms and waves that blow through the ocean. As a contaminant to the peace that I am providing to you today, I will remove them from your life and make them an example for you to follow. Have faith in me. Take a look at me. Please be aware that I am in control of everything. At this point, the adversary will not be able to anticipate the outcome of the situation. In spite of the fact that the adversary is preparing his traps and snares, he is not banking on your refusal to emerge from the hidden location. According to the Father, there is a place of rest and trust that the adversary is unable to trespass upon. Become rooted in that location. I want you to know that I am coming through for you, even though the enemy may threaten you and defy you from a distance and make clanging and clattering sounds instead. You can have faith in the completed work that Calvary has done. Release all irrational worries and put your faith in the goodness that I provide. I want you to know that I am the source of your joy and peace. I am protecting and guarding you at this very moment. I am here to assist you whenever you need it until the period of difficulty has passed. The words of Jesus are spoken today, I have not called you to contention and strife. Let there be no more strife, declares the Father. Refuse to compete or be in a struggle with the people who are in your immediate vicinity. They might assert that they have authority over you or urge that you pay attention to what they have to say, but you should ignore them and place your trust in me instead. Refuse to defend yourself or look for an opportunity to take offense at people who have slandered and mistreated you, and instead immerse yourself in my word and my truth. They will be dealt with by me. If you make the decision to be a part of the solution rather than a part of the ongoing problem, I will remove them from your life in a way that is noticeable to you. Maintain a state of inner peace. 
take into consideration what I have to say about you rather than what other people have to say or insist about your life and your testimony. In the event that you are going to argue, the Father instructs you to argue in favor of the faith. Refuse to give in to temptation and the devil will run away from you if you are going to put up a fight. You should not fight as one that beats the air, rather, you should fight the good battle of faith against the spirit of disbelief that is present in the land. If you are going to fight, then you should fight. Put that man out of your mind and focus your attention on me. Your best efforts should be directed toward discovering my thoughts, my mind, and my spirit. Regardless of what other people believe or say about you, it is irrelevant. When I find that your actions are pleasant to me, I will make it so that even those who are opposed to you are at peace with you. If you want to avoid becoming preoccupied with the thoughts of men, you should commit yourself to my intentions and not rely on your own knowledge. You should get started on this right away. On this day, I intend to call you to a particular level of maturity in this particular area. It is time to act now. The award will essentially be available right away. As of today, God has revealed to you that my love is boundless, and my grace is beyond your comprehension in you. Getting along with me is not that difficult at all. It is not true that I am a stern God who sits on the throne of heaven and hurls lightning bolts of judgment at you. In order for you to have a genuine understanding of who I am, you will need to make it a point to eliminate from your life the prevalent and erroneous notions that you have about who I am not. I am not the one who is responsible for chaos. I am not the source of the sorrow that you are experiencing in your life. I am neither cruel nor unmerciful in any way. When you are going through a difficult period, I do not isolate myself from your suffering or keep my distance from you. All of these things have been taught to you in my name by people who assert that they have the ability to impose upon you their perception of my character. They have me completely misunderstood. My name is God, and I am a loving and good God. The amount of patience I have for you is beyond any human metric. Your life is continually in my thoughts, and I pray that I may bring out life, light, and blessings. You are receiving a gift from my hand with each and every breath that you take in. Your future has been molded by me, and I have recorded each day of your life in my book. I do not intend to cause you any kind of pain or injury in any manner. It is because I love you that I adore you. I have made available the grace of Calvary in order to liberate you from every facet of your personality that is in opposition to my nature. All of the things that are relevant to life and godliness have been made available to you. When you are willing to accept the changing of your circumstances, you will also be willing to accept the transformation of your character. However, I have provided you with forgiveness, repentance, and transforming grace in order to imprint you with my image and eradicate all trace of transgression and iniquity from your heart. Sin is a reality that is inherent to the human condition, and you are not free from it. I have come through for you, and I am moving in your life in a radical way today. Trust me, welcome me on my own terms, and know me as I actually am. I have come through for you. As of today, God says this day, the force of my dunamis is coming to visit you. In order to rejuvenate and renew you in every aspect of your being, including your intellect, emotions, and physical body, my power and my energy are pouring through you. At this moment, I am about to fill you with my ideas and my vigor, even if your mind may be exhausted. Your feelings may be struggling, but I am pouring the wine of my delight upon you in order to repair your heart and give you the strength to hope, trust, and take risks once more. Do not be concerned about the appeal to be a risk taker. The most important thing for a heart that is filled with faith to do is to take risks. I am going to make your steps more substantial as you leave. When you bring yourself into a position of radical faith, you will not be let down in any way. It is not true that I am a God who deceives. Because I am not a man, I should not lie, 
and because I am a son of man, I should not express regret. If I were to say what I would do in your life, would it not be something that you would choose to do? I am certain that I have made your heart hurt by bringing about the very things that I have wished to bring about on your behalf with my efforts. This is what the Father says, trust. Take pleasure in the things that I am developing. Be conscious of the fact that you are not being misled or disillusioned. I will lead you to drink the sweet and eat the fat and know the fullness of the table that I have filled for you with every good thing heaven gives. God says today change is at hand. Get ready for a shift in circumstances. Hold everything loosely. Stay flexible. This is not the season to pack up all those resources and affections that have only kept you in the place of limitation. Let go says the Father. Empty your hands and simply ascend into a place of new trust in me. The place of trust is your place of security. The posture of trust is the launch pad of new possibility. Give me, give yourself the latitude to bring about the unanticipated blessing that you could not have dreamed I would cause to come to pass. I am the God of highest heart's desire and greatest dream fulfilled. There is nothing small or insignificant about your life. What I have done is make you the focus of my attention. I have graven your name on the palm of my hand. I will never forget or forsake my kindness toward you. My loving kindness and tender mercies are the parchment of heaven upon which your days and years are recorded. The record is assured and as you commit your way to me we will walk it out together. Trust and accept says the Father the full accounting of Calvary's dread cost is accruing to you this day as the object of my love and my favor. God says today the promises I have given you are much closer than you realize. The promise of your Father is not so much dependent upon a period of time as a quality of faith. I am not sitting back in the heavens looking at a stopwatch or a day on the calendar before I act in your life. I am a God of the now. Now is my native habitat. I am not time bound therefore nothing I have in mind toward you is limited to time. I am not going to be hesitant about you. I am not taunting you with the passage of time or endless, senseless delay. Enter into your now. Realize that because I have time you have time. I am Lord over time therefore time is your servant and not your master. Trust me says the Father and I will empower you and lead you into a walk with me where time is your servant and the heavens are your footstool. We will walk through the days together and you will see me cause your yesterdays to be redeemed and your tomorrows to become secure. I am the God of the second chance. I am all about reclamation and restoration. You will step out into the potentiality of each day and know, just know that your Heavenly Father has all in hand therefore success is assured. Defeat is not a viable alternative. I am not a failure therefore you will not fail, as you put and keep your trust fully in me says the Father, the Father says today stand fast. Stand fast in your confidence. No longer flailing away at circumstances that are beyond your control. I did not call you to be in control. I called you to a place of quiet trust in what I promised you in the midst of challenge. You can choose manipulation and fleshly dominion or you can accept the authority I give that only flows through humility and deference to my plan for your life. It is time to stop acting in the power of the flesh and begin walking in the power of my spirit. The goals and purposes that have so long eluded you will suddenly become real probabilities when you come into that place of new and fresh yieldedness to me. I am the God who is able. My ability is an extension of your faith and trust in me. There is no disability in me. I am not impotent therefore you are not impotent. I am not powerless or incapable. Draw upon who I am on the inside of you and see the change come that you have cried out for. Refuse to see yourself any other way for you are in me and I am in you. What you have purpose to do in life cannot be founded upon your small estimation of your limited human strength. 
Set your sights and your expectations on what only I am capable of bringing about and you will have then some semblance of that wonderful thing that I have in store for you in your future. When it comes to your spirituality, the Father tells you today that your feelings are not the vehicle that you use. The dividends of my glory are received by your emotions on the inside of you, but it is your spirit that contains, expresses, and channels my glory from the throne to your life in the form of manifest substance and answers to prayer, as well as the fulfillment of your dreams and your vision. When emotions are allowed to take control, as they do in the case of fallen man and natural thinking, the outcome is feelings of irritation, rage, resentment, and dread. The Father adds, I do not want you to be emotion-driven, however, I do not wish for you to be an emotionless automaton who does not have any passion for my kingdom or zest for life. Religion has built an image of spirituality that would reject and wall off you from the things of life that I have given you the opportunity to experience to the fullest extent possible. You have reached a point in your life where it is time to let go of the meaninglessness and dryness of religious experience. According to the Father, this is the season for weddings. A widow who is cloaked in darkness and has nothing but a sterile and lifeless commitment to me is not going to be the target of my arrival. Therefore, allow yourself to feel your emotions, but make sure to keep them under control by bringing your spirit into the online world as the judge and the master of everything else about you, including your passions. Because your spirit is the place where my dominion resides and is enthroned, it is imperative that you reign within yourself. I release the glory to you, through you, and in you that causes angels to scream out, Holy, Holy, Holy. Your spirit is my own throne room in your life, and from there I give the glory to you. I invite you to enter that inner chamber, and I promise that I will revolutionize your life beyond anything you could possibly imagine.